Welcome everyone to the Dreamstead. We've got some uh, chicken projects going on as spring is approaching. We're uh, getting a few things geared up. We are about a week away from receiving our first flush of 75 meat birds um, for this year. We raise our own meat birds. We do Cornish cross broilers. And so we have our chicken run separated with this partition right here. We have a gate that we can pass between the two runs. But as of right now, see all these are our egger chickens. They have free range of the entire run when we don't have meat birds. Here in the next week or so, we will lock them in that side. But we don't have an exterior gate into this side of our um, this side of our chicken run. So I am going to be installing a gate right here in this front corner of our chicken wired in um, run section. And so that way we can access this side without having to walk all the way around. Just make life a little bit easier. So um, basically we have a kicker board down here at the very bottom and we have our, our runner board that supports the top chicken wire as well as our full screened inside. I've already cut the vertical riser for this side of the door and then the other side of the door is just going to be framed in by this corner post which is concreted in super secure. This one is just going to mount to the kicker and the header. Um, so I've got to get another board cut as uh, kind of the face piece of this side and uh, then we'll get moving. Also, real quick disclaimer, um, we have been out of practice with filming, um, and so filming this project was kind of an afterthought, but uh, we just want to get into filming more of these projects, so for now, you're on the cell phone while the batteries charge up on the camera. Didn't even think about it until a little bit ago, but um, yeah, so hopefully sound isn't too horrible and we'll get uh, the uh, actual you know, real camera out here soon. All right, so once again, we're just installing a gate in through this corner of our chicken run. So this is our full vertical support, and then I have another one to go between the header and the footer to give a little bit more rigidity. I just cut that one. We're gonna go around and we're gonna install these. We're actually, because we're doing a cut-in door here, I'm actually not even gonna cut this uh, chicken wire or chain link until after we get the um, the whole frame in there. And then we will actually just attach everything. We'll attach the hinges on the inside, everything. And then we'll staple off everything and then go around and cut it out. And then it'll just be a full opening door at that point. So kind of cutting a little bit of uh, corners of having to you know, cut this down to size and everything, keeping everything taut since we're just doing this as a cut in door. Now, I'd say ninety percent of the projects that we do here, we use scrap pieces. Especially stuff like this. It's uh, just a, a door of a chicken coop. Nothing super neat, nothing needs to be super precise. Um, so we just use scrap wood that we have laying around um, here. It makes the project cheap, easy, and uh, also just if we have to replace something that it's uh, it's not that big of a deal. So I'm just cutting a little gusset um, to go from the top of the other door support outside of that corner to span the corner just to give a little bit of uh, rigidity to the top of that piece. If my saw were plugged in that would be helpful. Now I'll cut that piece. Sorry, I know the sun is in a horrible spot. But 
as talented as I am, I don't have control over a celestial being. There we go. Just a little bit of extra support here on this side post. All right, so for our door, we have, we're doing a full height door on this one. So I have my two verticals. I have my top and bottom horizontal supports. And then I am attaching them all by double gusseting every corner. And so we're using this, uh, this cedar fence post material, six inch wide fence post material to create those gussets. And so there'll be a gusset on each side of each corner uh, and then we'll also be doing a center rail on both sides with this material as well just to keep everything nice and square good news on two levels we got everything cut for our door and we're on the camera the vlog cam so here is all of our pieces and uh, we have our corner gussets that have an eight inch interior um, I went ahead, instead of using this same material, just used some scrap ply from our last project for the center runners, and then our verticals and our top and bottom rail horizontals. And uh, yeah, so let's get them laid out. All right, here she is, all laid out and beautiful. Alright, so I have these two corner gussets attached. I just gotta attach the other three pieces onto this side and then we'll flip it and repeat. I'll uh, show you when we get it flipped. Alright, so here's the door all flipped and uh, so what we had to do, pre-mounted these hinges um, and then have to fit these gussets over the top of those. So. That's just something I had to think about because we're using these elongated door support uh, hinges. And I just did one at the very top, one at the very bottom. Uh, we will forego the middle one, but I've attached all of the gussets except for this corner and that one. And then it'll be time to get it in the coop. Jen and the pup pup just got home from work. Playing a little fetch in the backyard, full of craziness. This is our current way that we have to walk, so you'll get an idea of why we're doing this. Y'all only have a few more weeks in here. You gotta move out. Getting evicted. Oh, hi, Jen. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, I can't wait for this got my lovely assistant in there uh, so we just have this thing propped up on a 2x4 on that kicker board so that'll come out once I get the hinges attached but you can see the top hinge there we just have access from this outside um, be a little bit tricky with the chicken wire but it's a lot easier to do it this way than it is to cut out the chicken wire and then cut a fitted piece so let's get it attached Good morning, chickens. Good morning. Hello. All right, we're back out here this morning to finish up our new gate project here. Um, so we got it all hung. Now we just need to get it attached to the chicken wire on the other side. All right, so I just set this uh, log up here against the gate to make sure that it's held out as far as need be to um, attach the wire on the other side. All right, so we have chain link here. It's a four foot chain link that we buried a foot down, so it's only three feet high. And that is a mostly a dog 
slash predator barrier, even though we don't really have very many predators around here. So I need to mount this chain link to our uh, door support post because we won't have the chain link attached where the gate is. So I need to be able to cut this. So I gotta attach that and then cut it. So to attach it, we're gonna be using these little round over nails, uh, staples. And uh, so I'll just pound those in and get, get it all good and attached. bolt cutters. I'm trying to just cut the chain link. Chain link removed. Now that the entire thing is stapled, we'll just use our snips and we'll cut out the uh, cut out the door. All right, pretty sure I got the whole thing cut around the edge. So now's the moment of truth. She should swing free. There you go. Got a door. All right, so I just realized that the camera wasn't recording when I did the install of our uh, auto return on this door. So this door, and we're gonna be converting the other two outside doors to this chicken run. We are doing latchless doors. Um, like I said, we have this, um, this chain link as a, a predator barrier, but we don't have any predators really. Um, and so we're just doing a spring return door with no latches. So they open outward. So anything big from the outside trying to get in won't be able to just push the door open. Um, and the chickens don't have enough strength or smarts to push the door open. But basically we just attached a big long, uh, it's like 14 inch long spring up here at the top of the gate. And then I put a, uh, a hook bolt on this side so if we wanted to be able to leave the gate open we can just slide the spring off of it it'll swing open and stay there um, but typically with that spring attached you open the door you walk through and then it'll close itself and we just have a stopper here and so it just hits that stopper and stay shut. So now we're gonna convert the other two doors um, that are outside doors into this run to this style of gate. Auto gate comes in handy. When you got full hands, you just push it open. Walk through. All right, so here's the last door. Um, I went ahead and just did it. Didn't wanna bore you too much with all of the repetitive nature of this project today, but basically, it was mounted the other way. This door used to open inward. It was the only inward opening door. And we wanted to switch that around to have it open outward. And now she opens and closes just like we want to. Definitely makes life easy. So this spring we went ahead and mounted at a little bit of an angle here. Yeah, works really well. So now we have all of these doors, automatic closing, and just push open. This one, like I said, is a lingerer, but it gets closed and it closes solid, stays there. All right, well, that brings this video to a close. Now, it's projects like these that we do on the daily here at the Dreamstead. So if you're into this kind of thing, then consider subscribing. Some uh, backyard gardening and farming stuff, DIY projects, uh, and just plain old fun. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you found this video to be interesting and informative. Till next time, take care of yourselves, everybody. Make it a great day. Peace out.